Okay, well, it's open with the Renata alongside it if it's given over. But for RA, uh, what else can be denied here, Lyric? Aphelios again? I guess we are really just in Aphelios meta once more. Yeah, going straight towards that strong 2v2, able to come out in V5, are so ready with their picks and bans. Rookie going straight towards Italia, so some decent scaling damage later on, able to come through uh, the ability to uh, impact the map. And now the Amumu, a champion we've already seen a ton of in recent games, but this Amumu is buffed, a bit more base damage on your ulti, lower mana cost on your bandage toss, which just mm. gives PV God even more opportunity to be the aggressor. Oh yeah, as he would love. I also want to point out that with the jungle pick there, sorry, with the mid pick there for Rookie, uh, we've also seen a couple of times that Talia being flexed. So maybe we'll keep a possibility out, out there that B5 want to play around that back as we go towards the uh, second phase of bands with the Silas getting locked in here as well. Lyric, we need top laners. We need junglers if uh, that truly is going to be a Talia in the mid lane too. And there's a lot still open. Uh, true, you're right. I guess for V5, right, that Talia is a flex pick coming on through. So Shaolin Bao definitely being someone who can pilot that pick. He's already even played it once so far. The split, it was a win. I don't even think he died in that game. Yeah. But for RA, would like to see something that can pair well with the Silas. Silas being the type of champion, right, who wants to all in and needs to look for these all ins to be able to find winning trades so having a, a strong early jungle who can emphasize that would be quite nice on the side of v5 the fact that they get to see what are you going to pick on four and then decide where uh the tilia pick goes feels like it will be a really nice plus for them so far though right their composition signaling all huh. about the all in so definitely gonna want to see rich pair on something that goes quite well with that i just love that maybe they're thinking the same thing about that talia going into the jungle because a ban against rookie with the yone is maybe something we don't know well especially with the fact of ra bringing out their their mid lane option first right that allows for the potential pivot to be able to come through in terms of bringing out a different mid laner to look for you know a more advantageous 1v1 but gwen a pick that Kind of fell through the cracks in the first series, despite, again, still being sure. incredibly relevant. Uh, feels like it would be a decent pickup for the side of RA. It's even been Cube's most played champion so far, the split. But I'm not going to be falling it out. Instead, Luyang gets a jungle pick over Shaolin Bao. Again, we kind of get to see the cards of V5 here for their first game back with Rookie. Looking over a jungler for now. We'll just hold on that thought. Uh, but for V5 here, Lyric... A lot of all-in already built up. There's a lot of crowd control, too. I just want to wait and see. I'm not going to jump into anything yet. Uh, I, we still have Belveth open and available. The Allow is something that hasn't been played. I hate that the players are playing with our hearts, but nevertheless, we get more normal. Yeah, I feel like V5 get a bit of leniency considering that they went through their first series of picks so quickly. So bringing us to this now... Again, still kind of expected to, to, to go towards mid. Now being confirmed, bringing out the wreck side, just kind of one of those old school counters to lease in in regards to being able to cancel that Q, being able to come through with the knockup. And now for RA, we get to see where they are looking to answer with their toppling pick. So far, having pretty decent setup to be able to play out through sides if they were willing to opt into more scaling like the Kale, which they are going to highlight now. We'll give you the 1-3-1 with the Silas and the Kale having ability to pressure. You already have the strong mid-jungle 2v2 with these two all-in uh, skirmishers, and they will round out with that. So, timer again, Lyric. Are we, are we going to start talking about it, or is there more than meets the eye here for RA's comp? No, I mean, right, I feel like RA's comp, like, decently well-wound. Well well-rounded, well-rounded in the sense that like, like right, you have the 5v5, you have the ability to play out through, through the 1-3-1 as well like we just hit on. If you could blow Rookie's Flash early, I mean, Silas just has so much all-in pressure with the Abscondum Duck, it would really limit his movement and then set up for Luyan and Strive to really be able to take over the map to where I feel like V5 with champions like Amumu, Kalista, Rek'Sai are just so heavily indexed into being able to take over this early game. Yeah. But for V5, that was one of their, their big strengths, right? Like, sure, maybe they didn't index into it as hard as, say, top esports did in playoffs. Sure. But V5, I think, were one of our, like, strongest and most proactive teams in the spring split. So now, with Rookie back on the roster, we'll see how it pans out, especially, again, with them continuing to run Shaolong Bao, despite the fact that Rookie's back. And I want to quote you on V5, because their play style has always been something that's interesting. You talked about them being, you know, not the best macro team in the past, but 
quoting from the document that we all have that you wrote in yourself, constantly having an idea of what they want to do. Amazing direction. That's what you say. Uh, for V5, early game direction, their transition always feels like it's on point. And even with Dream, we could say the same thing. Yeah, I feel like V5 are one of the teams who always knew how to push the state of the game forward, right? Like, they, they would always get into the enemy jungle, get the deep vision down, and play for those picks. They were never a team who would just wait for Baron or wait for the next dragon to come up. If they have an advantage, they are going to force it forward and try to just keep expanding on that gold lead. So hopefully now, with Rookie coming back, V5 won't have lost the step, and they can continue their undefeated streak going forward. Nice to see him once again. Welcome back, Rookie, and welcome to the series. That welcomes him back. With RA trying to challenge V5, the undefeated team, who's only dropped two individual games in the LPL so far. One to RNG, one to anyone's legend. Can RA at least do the same? Or finally take that first loss or push V5 to that first loss. Now, this invade a little bit cheeky. We like ships in the night. V5 going to be walking into this one. And Rookie spots it out first with PP God on this Amumu not going any closer. Five members of RA walk in. Or, excuse me, four. And four will also walk out with nothing but a ward dropped and a standard start with a ward in response from V5. Yeah, nothing too crazy going to come out from this level one. Just going to get standard starts coming through. We do see Rich going with the Ghost over the Ignite. So already showing yep. us that he's playing more for those 5v5s and that mobility that he can bring out later on rather than just, you know, indexing even heavier into just trying to win out through these trades in topside. But I expect a lot of attention to be paid down to the bottom lane, right? We have a Kliston and a Mumu. Uh, champions who are have really aggressive trading patterns. PB God wanting to find those bandage tosses in. Callista wanting to commit for those all-ins. And then hopefully Shaolong Bao, once he does make his way back down towards this bottom half of the map, to be able to punish Iboy Yuyanja, being on two very squishy champions. Yeah, you know, and coming closer to Photic and PP God, as we see a level 2 set up with a bandage toss nicely done. I think Photic and PP God have impressed us quite a lot this split. Uh, we had a huge segment about them last time that I cast V5. Photic and PP God have just been in control of their lane and have been someone that, once again, have done a lot better than expected considering that this is the first year that they're playing together. Yeah, I definitely think they've had their ups and downs, but their ups have outpaced their downs, which for PP God, who was coming off such a rough year in 2021, I think was wholly surprising. Photic, I think, had improved towards the end of his tenure in Top Esports heard and saw a lot of good things about him when he went back down to the LDL, so yep. happy the transition was able to come forward. But right now, we're Ooh. getting the invade coming out on top side. Yeah, and Shaolong Bao, I mean, he's got such a big health bar advantage. Skirting around Vision Lee and now spotting him out, and here he starts as Shaolong Bao uses Rookie as well. A bit of a reset on the red buff, but Luyen doesn't know that. He backs all the way around his jungle, and as he continues to take the red buff outside of Vision, Luyen is not going to spot this out until right about now. <laughs> yeah, is able to see it in the end. Luyen going to try and get back in here. Oh, Could even nice. buy time for Strive to potentially come through with the fact that Rookie had to go back to mid. And it yeah, will. Shaolin Bao. Okay. Oh, it doesn't get it. And uh, Luyen getting red. Uh, that's a piece of good news. With the smite going down and Shaolin Bao just having to go back to his own scuttle. That'll be a CS differential and Luyen is now back on track. I will say, though, V5 did end up being able to get both Scuttle Crabs. Fotic and PP God picked up the one in the bottom lane right now. So sure. we'll at least be able to deny that from Loyen. And when we hit on Loyen, right, it's a lot about how he plays for his own advantage. Oh, PP God. God. Very deep. Bailout great in the extended little trade here as Yuyan just survives enough. And PP God now just going to have to wait for that pot to put him in a better position. <laughs> yeah, PP God. Fully enjoying the Amumu buffs coming through. Yeah. Q mana costs going from 70 flat to 30 to 50. So you can throw that one out just a lot oh. more liberally. Is Here Q. we go. Okay, Shalom Bow with the flash. Yep, he's going to commit it and cube with his own, but close to being a very dead winged machine. A Shalom Bow with the summoner trade going to be worth in the top line. Yeah, sad that they weren't able to finish it off. So close to being able to find that kill. Cube. Does have TP, so shouldn't really end up missing out too much on this wave, especially with it being a cannon wave. So we're going to stop lane just fine. Shaolong Bao, like you said, trading flash for flash is fine, trading it for one of your laners. But for Rek'Sai, I feel like it's always a nice tool to have to be able to guarantee that you get the knockup on a play to be able to come through, especially when we hit on that Shaolong Bao. Probably going to want to look to be able to put some pressure down in this bottom lane. Oh, yeah. I mean, this Rek'Sai wants to be everywhere. 
all at the same time. And the Shaolong Bao coming back to this peak is impressive enough considering that we have a stagnant pool of junglers. We do not have the new weird, you know, flappy bird Belveth picked up today. And Shaolong Bao goes straight for something like the Rek'Sai when a couple of options were open. So he gets my respect lyric, but it's about what he can do and whether it can be like the time he was on RNG. We remember back in the day, this RNG jungler had some pretty highlight moments on this champ and it was one of his best. Yeah, it was one of his best, but uh, definitely synergized with this playstyle in terms of the aggression that he was looking yeah. to bring back then. Oh, Rich. Okay. No ulti available, but Sonic Wave landing from Lo Yen is going to set up the Tempest Cripple. No further play access as PD Gods made the roam and mid in a bit of trouble. Strive and Yu Yan Jia about to get knocked hard, but maybe my concept of knocking is not there. Strive with the steal away of the Curse of the Sad Mummy way before PP God has it. And Rare Adam dealing with quite a lot in this game, but it still remains a zero kill all. Right, and that's a remarkable ult for to be able to take. You have yeah. such an easy time of finding access in onto the back line. And heck, 4v5, since the composition is just going to be running full force at you, should set up Strive. Uh, potentially, to be able to find easy access to some of these plays, is going to want to try and find some impact before this one does time out, though. So I'm curious to see what RA do look for, because Photic should be able to catch this wave quite easily in the bottom side of the map. And I mean, V5 don't actually have to really opt into anything right now. They don't. Well, they might have to opt out of getting away. Curse has had Mummy used early from Strive. As Rookie now defends against his turret. A warm welcome back from Rare Adam as Strive with a good counter play, but Rookie still battling him away. Yuya Jar helping out with the loyalty program, and that means Strive will survive. But Rookie now without his summoner and his ignite goes with it too. Yeah, summoner's gonna be down on both sides. Could potentially open up the Dragon to come out for Victory 5 right now, though, with the fact that their bot lane was able to get pushing through there. Strive, ah, the fact that you're not able to connect with the kill once you do find the abscond of Duck is quite tragic. You've, you've committed so many members to mid, and now, with the fact that that's a wasted window, right? It just gave a window for V5 to get the push and bot, commit towards this Dragon, even getting a bit of vision down in enemy jungle so they know where Lo Yen is right now. And we kind of have to remember that it is going pretty well for V5 across these lanes. As we look at the replay again, Strive early on the timing here, but Rookie are burning the flash with instinct. Yeah, like you said, though, that the fact that so, <clears throat> so early on the timing with the ultimate, not guaranteeing the kill to be able to come through, Lil Yen not able to connect with any sort of sonic wave to be able to just give the final bit of burst needed to bring Rookie down. Well, Strive, uh, he's burnt the hijack, but that ultimate's going to be up and available. Note, though, for Rookie, he's got the Weaver's Wall. And if we're going to see Strive uh, picking that one up, we're going to see mid laners start getting involved in some of these side lanes. And Lyric, you talk so much about B5 wanting to influence both of the got here in this game. So far, nothing's really happened from this Rex side. And for Shaolong Bao, he is falling behind in CS, trying for these opportunities. Yeah, so far he's just kind of hovered and played around with Rookie so far. Which, right, when you look at our ace comp and what they are able to do early, I feel like it is very much just kind of centered around mid-jungle being the only things able to find any impact on. So it's at least reading what RA can do with their options quite well, but not being able to find the punish just yet. Is Lu Yen gonna have to back off? Take the engage, need a little seismic shove onto Lu Yen, a good kite away from Rookie. But red buff was taken in the interim and Strive is late to the show. The safeguard over the wall from Lu Yan and it's right during Herald time as he backs in the brush and Shaolong Bao calls the bluff with the ult coming through. It's time to die. Shaolong Bao gets his first spray and Rookie with a seismic shove on top of Strive. A stolen ult is all that is as a double goes over and this duo on fire in a quick minute. Lu Yan basing right in front of his opponents, getting punished by Rookie and Shaolong Bao. And, I mean, <laughs> Rookie might have been gone for almost five weeks, but it looks like B5 have not lost a step playing around their mid laners so well. This is going to guarantee them a Herald and Rich. Ulti comes through. Rich has already used all the needle work as Cube is out of mana, but range might play a factor here as to the top side rookie with the weaver's wall he's going to pull this timer out the seismic shove in the perfect spot forcing the flash from cube once again he's still got it rich baiting it out beautifully knowing rookie has that weaver's wall to be able to follow through for any kills and i mean so far 
1.5k gold lead for a victory five in the early game, but they have the Herald, so you know that's going to be a gold lead that they can start escalating very quickly. Strive at least answering with something in the mid lane, but RA not finding too much for their troubles. Trying for a response down the bottom side, but it's on award. PP God and Potic play the respect, and as TP goes to the top side, just note that Lyric mentioned the Herald moments ago, so we're going to see the setup come through, but let's watch this play again, because Lo Yen, as you said, decides to back away in front of a wreck site. Yeah, he saw them walk through, but just assuming they're making their way back down to there lane or maybe even just getting control of the Herald. Disrespectful. It is punished. Shelling about coming through with the ultimate. Now has the flashback up to make sure that Strive goes down. Nice knockback from Rookie to guarantee even more CC and just make sure that his jungler gets a nice 2-0 start. Well, he's got a serrated Turk after that and he's got a herald in his back pocket we'll question where it's going to go it seems like the top side is the play but rare adam lyric are trying to match this one yeah with with v5 okay Rich no gonna fully commit cube has no ulti here wondering what's going on as lo yan with a safeguard probably needed a dragon's rage too rich with one more piece of the needlework that doesn't fly through in the end as strive starts moving up chain lash does absolutely nothing and I guess RA get away with it for now and V5 stop their, do their, their dive without the help going down. <laughs> yeah, V5, I mean, completely pivoting towards the top side, right? And I feel like a lot of it's coming from how many times they've been able to burn uh, Cube's Flash. Flashless right now, they've been able to punish him quite well. You already have two plates on top side, so it seems like V5 are like, hey, this is where we have summoners. This is where we can we can outright break a turret if we want with this Rift Herald. So giving some attention now, but with Dragon coming up in 35 seconds, V5 off the back of that, you know, not successful play, gonna finally pivot to maybe enabling Photic and PP God. But PP God, gotta yeah, be careful. Handshake, great cleanse there. Ignite as well. Hostile takeover, but it's just him and the turret for now. It's flashing away from the Moonlight Vigil means two ulties are available. But Photic, no summoners there. He doesn't have PP God near enough by as well as he wants to throw him at someone. But for RA, a worthwhile trade, as you said, Lyric, with the dragon coming up. Yeah, look at items already. Prowler's Claw built for Shaolong Bao, so he is one. huge on this Rek'Sai sign. trying uh, to, trying to get some counter up. jungling. Hey, come oh, over the with us. It's a nice place over here. PP God, bandage toss number one, pulled out. Gravitum on this support as well, but iBoy has no activation. His Herald's going to be, excuse me, Scuttle's going to be secured by RA. Dragon's still not looked at for now, but RA have a bit of vision to play out for now, already doing a nice job of being able to punish Votic in that bottom lane. Uh, stops the aggression from V5 into bot side jungle because, you know, Votic being half HP, having those summoner spells up means it would be a little bit risky. So they wait. He's going to come back from lane now and trying to find a bit of a sneaky pick from mid lane. This angle is ready for a seismic shove. Shaolong Bao with the Prowl's Claw as well. The range is huge as... He knows Strife senses Strife. it though, he knows. Yes, yeah, of course he does. The Herald gonna be dropped down at the very least. Gold given over to Rookie. As even Lo Yen will be here, but Rookie close enough to the turret. And as he continues pushing out Rare Adam, he'll share in the bounty. So a lot of gold given over to this mid laner who right now has a couple of assists under his name, but even in CS, even a tier here on the Talia mid lyric is something worth mentioning is no no ult on the top side. Yeah, looks like Rich. Still kind of posturing up to play aggressive, but look at the mini-map. V5, I mean, going going full stride with what we talked about earlier, right? The V5, in my mind, we're one of like the better teams at just aggressively playing for picks in the enemy jungle. Yeah. They're still sticking around that bottom lane. You can look at how much vision they have right now and just opening up for uh, the dragon to come out from Shaolong Bao. It's going to be free by himself, taken easily. Second dragon there too. And when we talked a little bit about comps in this game lyric, being okay b5 finding an early game lead like getting that snowball into effect i think it's firm to fair to say that 2k gold lead is a nice start two dragons forces ra to be in a certain position at a certain time too yeah forces forces them to be ready for the play that v5 are going to be looking for uh ra though not really having too many options in terms of what they can look at on the map right now we kind of hit on for their their early game right a lot of their agency really only coming out from trying to force Lil Yen to make plays around mid which we saw strive try to do earlier with the curse of the sad mummy sadly that one play didn't work and ever since then v5 have just been this like 
this kind of like chain of pressure constantly moving between mid and bot and heck even right on the rotation they've made their move up the top side so far but not giving any angles for ra to look to punish where they're strong i mean that's what we talked about b5 always adapting to what's next uh now around strive shallon bell still wants this mid game because a prey seek is an x but it's simply to force him off of the turret rookie will help open it up and that's first turret blood hit for v5 pushing gold to about 2.5k as well lyric and Well, hysterics. Mine too, nice. don't worry. Oh, you're still? <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. There, you know? there we go. There we go. I'm back in action at least. V5, poshing for another dive on the top side. Cube in a bit of a sticky situation with PP God, making know. it so he can't retreat. How's Curse of the Sad Mummy? But Strive does have teleport. Well, I'm not going to give you the solo cast for now. I apologize as TP comes through and you don't get to call the action anyway. Because I boy Nyu Yanja want a piece of it down on the bottom side. At least now, the TP in the top side. Looks like Harold oh, will be started here. as Rich is just going for it. And you're right, Rookie coming in. A bit of flavor is now Rookie <laughs> flashing forward. The confidence out of this man continues as one kill going down. His return, absolutely massive. And a swift play out of the soul lanes. A victory five. What more could you expect? I missed having Rookie play every few days so much. Rich starting it off, knowing he has his mid laner available. Rookie had Weaver's Wall the whole time to close the distance. Didn't even need it, just running down. Does have to use the Flash to be able to finish off some of those kills, but still, beautiful two picks coming out from the side of V5. They did play it safe on the top side at the same time as well. They started the Herald, but did back off once members of RA came to contest. But it gave them time for Calvary to show up. And now V5 should be able to take this Rift Herald for free. And you know, the rumor was like Rookie had been playing 107 league games within a week. I don't know how that's physically possible, but this guy's still in form as Rich, as you said, set it up. Yeah, Rich taking so much damage, sadly. Ultimate not able to hit coming out from Yuyanja opens up the kill for Rookie to come out and then just beautiful seismic shove to make sure that Yuyanja goes down as well. And alongside another Korean top laner, the Soul Lane has taken over the map. A bit of deja vu for all the old school fans out there as he'll open up a topside turret as well. And Lyric, the gold lead, moves to about 3k. Right now, RA have only opened up that bottom lane out of turret. So the map feels a little bit closed off for them, but the team that hasn't had too much agency as we've seen around the last couple of fights. And this game feels very stock and standard RA in terms of like fall behind early. We don't see them link up all too much, but some plays were were like tried and assessed, but still their laner is not falling too far behind, right? We see Strive pretty much even in mid lane, Cube doing fine up towards the top side. Lo Yen's actually ahead in farm for how much time Shaolin Bao has spent. We saw, right, traversing from mid to bot to mid to bot. So this is how RA typically keep the gold close. Still 3K behind, right? But it feels like it feels like with how much V5 have controlled the map, I mean, it, it's looked like like a 5 to 10K lead with just how much they are dictating the action. So sure. nice by RA to keep it somewhat close, but this game is still solidly and firmly in favor of V5, especially with Rookie now picking up uh, the, the Archangel staff. Yeah, two items. Uh, I want to point out, I was wrong. 107 games, I believe, in a month. Not a week. I'm a, I'm a bit of a fool. I don't know how you play 15 solo queue games. Bandage toss! Uh, 16 a day is, we get the engage. Had to clarify their lyric, as, you know, already say enough foolish things on broadcast. 15 seconds till the dragon, and with that summoner burnt from a cheeky bandage toss, Yu Yan Jia now down to summoner, and it's in front of this dragon, which makes number three. Yeah, sorry. I, I expected the bandage toss play to be way more hype, but, uh, Nothing did happen, but PB God now does have a flash, but neither does Yu Yancha's Lu Yen. Trying to just brute force his way in here. We need to look at the hostile takeover. I really feel like that's RA's only real way of being able to take a fight. Ooh, or if, wall. if Strive, what ult can even take? Well, he's zoned off across the wall and needs it's gone of duck. And yeah, where's the ult gonna be? His PP God curses the sad mummy outright. Hostile takeover's air lyric, but it's latest the third dragon secured and Rich nails down with the needle work again. Cube wants to ult in the middle, but that ulti from Shallon Bao buys his time and space. I boy left alone and victory five with Dream, with Rookie, it's all the same. Right now looking like the best team in the LPL by far. Yeah, V5 just completely dismantling Rare Adam. 
Strive, I guess, was just waiting out the Curse of the Sad Mummy cooldown, because that's really the only ult that looks like ben like hugely beneficial to the side of RA and being able to find those fights that you want. But, I mean, the fact that Silas not able to find any impact or get anything done in, in, in the team fight, Rookie, like you said, kind of pincering members in. They have to funnel into this very small choke point, which sets up PP God to find a huge engage. Rich getting straight onto the back line with some of the snips. And then beautifully, Botic and Rookie just jumping forward, getting the damage down. Looked like RA didn't even have a chance. What more can you say? RA haven't had a chance to do much in this game. It's a 5k gold lead. It continues growing out of control. The third dragon means in three and a half minutes, that time is set. And in this game, B5 continue to run the map, and it's nice to see that Shaolong Bao and Rookie have that similar vibe to Casa Rookie, where as a mid-jungle duo, they're pretty much moving first. They're always in the blind spots of the jungle, and this game could be no exception. And it's just no surprise, right? I feel like one of the strengths of Rookie, like, th that he's had is just how well he's able to work with this team, sure. whether it was on IG, covering for the Shy up in top lane, making those roams, or even just... Even just time, even like working with Shun, which looked kind of rough at first when that first started to getting it down. But I'll stop because Baron looks like it's gonna be committed to. Rookie and Rich both zoning quite nicely. They don't know if Loyen will be able to find a way into the pit. Weaver's War comes through. Rookie sends out the whole team. Sonic Wave comes through, but they can't get near. Two man side, big shove. Rookie's return, man. That's the only story that we need to talk about as he flashes over, looks for Cube. A close call as the threaded volley won't connect, but hey, with another angle, reality could come true as Cube has no summoners left remaining, but boy, oh boy, are RA getting pummeled by our number one team. Right, I mean, 7K gold lead, Soul Point at 22 minutes, Baron at 22 minutes, pushing down even more turrets. V5 just taking a commanding lead, and heck, they don't care that RA are still here. They're going to keep going. Yeah, with the Fates call in, Bojic now wants a piece of it as Cube has no ulti, and they know it. Ren for stack number one. A turn from Shaolin Bao as he spins first. Handshake good, but the ulti dodged away from. Bojic looking for the ring engage. Shaolin Bao turning eye boy into something else. Oh, that was close. And that was close, but it was still so slick. Victory five. I mean, this team is close to getting into playoffs, Lyric. They're heading down the barrel of a 7-0. And of course, I'm going to get ahead myself as the first kill goes down to RA, but big 3-5 right now. Oh, styling on Rare Adam. It's not even close. No, and this just makes me excited, right? You kind of wondered if maybe, like, there would be... I don't want to say growing pains, maybe just, like, a readjustment. Of, like, hey, Rookie's back. Like, maybe we'll, we'll look a little shaky. But here, I really love how V5 did this. Have Rich and Rookie zoning out of the pit. You're going to see here as well the Sonic Wave connect onto Rich. Rich instantly comes back out from the pit when that happens. Not going to allow Lo Yen to get in. And then the Seismic shove to come out from Rookie to get damage down on the Striving Cube. Takes him out of the fight. Rich following up with the Needlework to find the first kill. And then Yu Yanja meets his doom at the hands of Shaolong Bao. So V5 playing that Baron setup gorgeously, not allowing anyone to find a way into the pit. You know, it's fun watching Botic against you, Yanja. One thing we didn't talk about is the top esports bottom lane that got remade. Uh, Yu Yanja was Botic's support. And a lot of people were like, oh man, Botic's rubbish. Yu Yanja's rubbish. And we came back to Botic redeveloping himself. And it feels like Yu Yanja's kind of done the same thing over the years. They've both developed quite a lot, but I think finally, Botic's out of Yu Yanja's shadow. It was yeah, a bad Botic. shadow. Botic has come a long way. It's even crazier to think that that was the bot lane that followed up. Um, who was it? Ben? Loken and Ben? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was Loken indeed. and Ben to Botic and, and Yu Yanja to Jackie Love, and now we got Mark. Yeah, we do. Ooh. A little bit of spice, right? PP God, was that just... Was that just cause? I mean, he has a Zonyas. Maybe doesn't care as Lo Yen is getting snipped to death by Rich. Cube does not do enough damage. Seismic shove again. Botic heads forward. They flash onto Rookie. Yu Yan Jia wants a hostile takeover. Which hits nobody. And V5 all survive once again with the threat of the push now gone because they want Dragon Soul. And it also just goes back to the, the, the fact of like, right, 
for the five shorter range composition, wanting to find those fights, those kills to be able to break structures down. We've seen they are willing to dive like they were in the earlier exchanges, but they're gonna back off. They're gonna guarantee themselves soul. And now they can look to start up that push once again, as we're gonna see in the bottom right hand corner. Yep. What you can say about it at this point. Uh, so you have you a know, mouth soul. It, it's Lyric. it's surprising that this game is actually longer than the first game of the day. Because this game has felt uh I mean it's felt V5 have been in control since minute one. Yep. I mean heck, even the only kill RA found, RA have only found in the last few minutes. It was in the base. I mean V5 want to end it now. This team at 25 minutes want to keep it clean. This Weaver's Wall once again flies through Ivoy and Luyan on the wrong side of it. And Strive is now isolated. There's the first death. This cube ulti so early. And Rich alongside with Botic, Fate, Call are going to get perfect knockup. up Yanja next on the menu, boys. As Botic even takes some of the Fountain's lasers. And with a double kill going over, pick an MVP, any MVP. But I tell you what, V5 looking even better with Rookie's return to the stage. It's a good feeling to see him back. Dream did a phenomenal job standing in, but you cannot replace Rookie, the type of player you can put on pretty much any roster and, 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 and it be an absolute upgrade, can just pull a team yeah. together. And yeah, RA didn't even look like they got a chance to play. Great mid-jungle synergy coming out from Rookie and Shaolin Bao. They were holding hands since minute one invading the enemy jungle, finding those picks, V5's vision control in the enemy jungle and like their ability to look for picks, but also choke the enemy team out from vision, just beautifully executed and, and sets up for this proactivity because V5, once again, keeping going with being one of our more proactive teams in the league sure. uh, of not, not sitting on a lead and being like, well, we're winning, but the next dragon's up in three minutes and we can use that to win a fight. No, V5 were like, we have an advantage right now. We're going to keep pushing this forward, looking to snowball the, the game. And, and they did so quite well, right? Their bot lane was yep. fine in the 2v2. They were left to their own devices. We see all this player on top side. Instantly, it's like, hey, now Rich is in a good position. We pivot back down to bot. And we're just like a seamless transition from, from top to mid to bot back to mid. Everything tied Agreed. together so well. Agreed, and, and every every moment was V5's like highlight play, um, from the gank to the bottom side to the Amimu setup to the dragon play, as you're saying. The way they played around Baron. Yes, the direction seems to be what we talk about with V5 every time it comes up. Uh, to quote you before, as I said, amazing direction in this team. You know, Victory Five always have their head about where they what they're going to do next, and uh, you got to appreciate it when, you know, teams like this in the LPL come along every so often and i know right now we're questioning like middle of the pack bottom of the pack and what's kind of going on apart from six teams in the league v5 were never in those six teams with dream and this performance against ra once again shows us that they're pretty consistent this split yeah v5 we're always going to be a team that was exciting to look out for did not lose a single step I'm, I'm really excited to see them play up against teams like JDG and, and so on and so forth later on, considering now they have, you know, this roster back together. To where on the opposite side for RA, I mean, disappointing performance, you know, needless to say, but still RA going up against V5 always felt like they were going to be the underdogs coming in. Weren't able to find it. They, they tried to set up that one player on mid early on, and maybe that could have been where, where you get some momentum, but sadly Strive pulling the trigger too early on the curse of the sad mummy and then we saw right as the game went on there was really no like there's really no phenomenal ultimates for strive to seal on on the opposing side other than that curse of the sad mummy so a lot of the time it felt like he was just left waiting out for that to come through sure. in another game where we have two players who were involved in no kills oh huh. yeah actually the zero percent there too cube and strive i'm yeah. sorry i was looking at i was looking at rookie stats because he pulls out the most four out of five stats in, in his team so I don't know, it's it's a narrative point, but it's also just a gameplay point that he returned with a massive, massive, I was going to say Chadness, but Lyric, I forgot the word I was looking for. He, he, he Thank God. With a Thank five. God that's what he... Re <laughs> yeah. You know, it's time, it's, it's time for a break. It is. Uh, you know, thank you for taking me there. It's the fever that's hitting me hard, but maybe not as hard as V5 hit RA. Can they recover? Well, after game two, well, after the break, we'll find that game.